been grinding for so long i wake up and chase my goals i go out and i go get it how to code that's all i know i don't succeed then i don't breathe success what does it mean if i conquer all my goals then i'm living out my dream dig deep go out and get it success chronicles compete until it's finished success chronicles go take care of your business success chronicles it's deeper than just winning success chronicles Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Chip Baker coming to you with another episode of the Success Chronicles. And today we have an amazing couple with us, uh, Glenn and Cherie Brooks Jr. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Uh, some may say Junior Junior. <laughs> I know. That's it. That's all love. But uh, but so excited and happy to have them on this episode today. They are doing some amazing things. Um, blessed and fortunate to, to share their knowledge and experience with others. Uh, and uh, I'm excited to get this one. So thank you guys for taking the time to interview with the Success Chronicles. Well, thank you for having us. Appreciate you for having us, Chip. Thank you so much, man. We're honored to be here. All right. Well, let's dive right into it. And, and I didn't say we're going to do a relationship chronicle, guys. So just, you know, we're going to talk about relationships and and that's what they do uh, in, in, on, in a daily basis. So. Yeah. So, like I said, I didn't lie to you. It's going to be good. <laughs> All right. So, if you don't mind, guys, tell us individually uh, where you're from and how it was for you growing up in your life. Okay. okay well, I'll start. Um, I'm originally born from Washington, D.C. I'm a D.C. native. Mm -hmm. um, I was born and raised there. Um, grew up in a two-parent home. Um, my parents are still married today. They've been married over 50 years. Um, Wow. But they're just married. And what I mean by that is that they're, they did not have a real intimate relationship. Their relationship was um, one out of more convenience, mm -hmm. I guess, than anything else. Um, they are, as they're getting older, they're starting to develop a friendship, but it was not an environment that I grew up in where I saw them be affectionate, that I saw them get along. My dad was an alcoholic for most of my life and um, they struggled, they had their challenges. And so I grew up, although I had both parents in the home, I didn't get affection or attention from either one of my parents. Oh, okay. So I was, um, I have an older brother. It was, so, it was me and my brother, but we were kind of on our own for most of our life. Um, my father was a great provider. He provided, we always had a roof over our head, but they were not emotionally in, engaged with me or my brother. So after um, high school, I went into the Marine Corps and served a tour of duty in the Marine Corps. Um, got married the first time um, while I was in the Marines. I have a beautiful daughter as a um, result of that marriage. Um, was only actually married, we were physically together maybe two years um, and then got divorced, I guess, after about seven years. Then I decided to give it a try again. Um, that was not successful either. Um, and I was married for two years. And then after that, that's when I um, made some major transitions in my life. I also previously had struggled with depression most of my life. I also struggled with addiction. Um, and so after the end of that second marriage, I made some major transitions in my life, got myself clean, got um, found Christ. And um, that was not long after right that. There. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, wrong right there. Yeah, amazing. That'll turn you all around. Right, all right. right. All right. the way. Absolutely. Right. And so after that, not too long after that, I guess about a year or two after that, that's when Glenn and I actually met. And um, we met. Um, I don't know. You want to tell that story? No, you go ahead. Okay. Tell, it. tell your on. version of it because you know mine a little different. A little different. Look, um, my daughter. I do with my wife. Yeah, right. like different story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They um, were two different perspectives. Same story, different perspectives. Right. Yeah. My daughter had always um, sang from when she was very little. She sang and had vocal lessons and everything. And so there was this broadcast that went out over the radio about this youth choir that was being formed. And so she wanted to audition for the youth choir. And little did I know that the founder of this youth choir was this guy right here. Mm. And so um, she auditioned, um, which was a feat in of itself because they had an age limit and she was actually slightly under the age to audition. But I had called the radio station and was like, her birthday's in a couple of months. Can you still let her do it? And so they let her audition. She actually was the first person to audition, the first person to get on the choir, to get accepted. Um, 
And after her getting on to the choir, I would come with her to rehearsals every Saturday. And I got involved from an administrative support um, position. I was helping out with, I was, was serving as like the parent liaison, working with them. And so here's the, this is where I jump in, because I'm going to tell you right now, <laughs> she's not telling you the whole thing. That she, 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 <laughs> jumping over stuff that, that, that Chip. So, so real quick, real quick, you got to let them know, you was coming in there with the big accordion not file. In the beginning. In the beginning, you was talking about what you, you need a permission slip He had for that. all these ideas what he was going to do with these babies and he want to take them we're going to take them on tour field gonna, trips i'm like and, you need permission slips for that right and, but you she had them with her chip <laughs> like she was walking around with permission this was and they say that administration is a gift right there's a gift of administration yeah. well this one has it well yeah. let me make a disclaimer i had been a girl scout troop leader mm -hmm. previously and so mm -hmm. i already had there you this go. it's not like i just pulled it up out okay of this magical all right all right because i'm telling you right now <laughs> You just, every time I said it's a form for that, that. <laughs> right? Well, she did have a little temporary little them, one of them little jump yeah, with the little string on it. She had all that, bro. I promise you. And there was some blank forms up in there. So I didn't know how prepared she was or wasn't. So I'm just gonna put it all the way out there. We're gonna keep it. Anywho, and so so oh, I was involved with the choir that way. He started to develop a daughter a relationship with my daughter because she's part of the choir. They yeah. you know have their relationship. And I really, at that point in my life, I wasn't interested in a relationship at all. I was done. I was tired. I had been, you know, I just wasn't looking for it at yeah. all. And so we became friends. Yep. We really were just friends. We would. Um, and that's another great place to start. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. God, Absolutely. Friends. And, then, and friends. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I, I honestly think that, you know, this time around, your third, my second, like mm -hmm. that was the thing that kind of help to turn the corner right particularly that friendship you know what i'm saying that, that we we majored on right and people thought we were weird yeah um and actually when we were friends we would hang out we would like after work i would meet him we would go and meet and have coffee and dessert he never came to my house i made sure i had my boundaries in place because i i wasn't looking for anything so i yep. didn't want to give him any signals <clears throat> nothing i'm not trying to and quite nothing. honestly at that time i was i was actually dating somebody, somebody else and you know? it was kind of almost done and we just kind of i just needed to talk yeah a he lot would tell time. me the stories about him and this and she'd be special like oh my person. gosh really <laughs> yeah so she had some challenges and i'm and stuff. i don't you know and we'll get into that a little right. bit we learned so much chip through our uh evolution mm -hmm. um and not only together but like what brought us together mm -hmm. on what to do what not to do and why so our story isn't necessarily the model story right. we learn so much from that um that 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 it's it really helps us in the work that we do today right and we so we were friends for probably about a year before we actually started dating yeah and that whole transpired was yeah, comical. yeah, yeah that, actually, that, that's a whole nother story there was so we were just friends and then uh, another gentleman had asked me out. Right. So I came to him. I was like, hey, because we were talking about doing something. I was like, oh, I can't do that because I'm going out with someone. So he's like, you going what? where? Huh? <laughs> you doing what? No. You now you have to understand you, the quick you back. You, you can't go. Quick backdrop to this, Chip, is that she had been on me for a couple of weeks, you know, like, so what are we doing? What is this? What, like, right, what, I'm trying to make sure we're still just friends. We, are we fr like, I'm like, we friends. What are you talking about? What is this? I mean, we're. What are we doing? We're eating dinner and we're, we're what, what do you mean? What are we doing? Like, you know what I'm saying? We, we get, yeah. we get amnesia. Right. And bro, when she said she wanted to go out with this brother, I was like, uh, let me, let me say this. We friends, but we ain't them kind of friends. Like, I don't know what this is getting ready to be with, with him, you and do, but no, nah, I'm not with that. Yeah. Yeah, you know I'm saying. Yeah, I feel that. Chip is I like, yeah. That. Yeah. Chip is like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> on. Only H Town can say it like that. Yeah. Right. I, 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 I love it. I love it. I love it. So at that point, when it was like, okay, so what is this? And he was like, well, we're more than friends. I want to be more than friends with you. I was like, okay. So, and that's when the relationship sort of turned a corner. And we turned a corner. Yeah. And then, um, not what six months it's probably about almost maybe maybe a little more than six not about nine months later we actually got uh married. actually got married mm -hmm. so so um but but yeah man god has been extremely good to us um sheree and i uh together uh chip um have learned so much so i grew up in a single parent home uh since i was seven my parents divorced when i was seven years old my father was a drill sergeant 
um, you know, two tours in Nam, all that stuff. So rough, tough, hardcore, um, not a sensitive person. Wasn't going to show you that side. So I grew up in a house full of women, uh, my mom, my sister, uh, and then all of my aunts, you know, basically were my influences. And so I like to tell people that I grew up a mama's boy. And the way I decide, define mama's boy is a man who thinks, uh, acts, and sometimes emotionally uh, uh, behaves like a woman. Right. And, and it has nothing to do with his gender, or sexuality, uh, sexuality uh, so to speak. It, it really is about his influence. And so he processes like a woman does. And that's fine for a woman. But when a man processes like a woman, that's a problem. And the tr the challenge is is that I, I began uh, sort of a life of processing without the logical part of my brain, and so therefore everything was super emotional. I wore everything on my sleeve, and li quickly life became all about me. And so uh, one of the things, my very first book, How to Raise a Man, Not a Mama's Boy, um, it, it chronicles what it's like when boys grow up without their dads and the void that's created there. And then if a mom is not careful, she in all her great intentions literally is creating a gap that goes further and further away from his manhood as opposed to bringing him closer to. And I get in trouble a lot when I say this, but I believe it takes a man to raise a man. Uh, he just doesn't have to be your man. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And so in that being the case, a lot of times, you know, ladies will think, well, I have to have a man for this young brother. That's my man. It's like, nah, that's not really it. And as a coach, you get a chance to kind of witness and see right. what that looks like. Like literally right. yeah, you yeah. can put together a team of men around your yeah. young son that creates that father void um, and fills it, so to speak, um, if you're paying attention. And so that book helps them to do that. So, right, so for I, me, I don't want to cut you off. No, go ahead, go ahead. But, um, but I, 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 I have lived that and have seen that from both sides of that. Mm -hmm. You know, single parent, mom, yep. myself, uh, and now being a coach, being yep. a daddy coach. Yeah, you right. know. So yep. I think you know you look back at those experiences and. You know, those experiences were a blessing growing up now because now I can use that. Yep. You know, because I know what they need. Sure. You know, absolutely. A, from what I missed. Or absolutely. What I feel I missed. And, and like the same thing with you, you know, mother in the church, uh, you know, great people. Yep. Love, love. Yep. You know, but, but, you know, just all those thoughts. So that's a great way to put it. I never have heard it like, 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 you know, that it's a known. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, like intellectually, you we get that. Say that. But, you know? but, but yeah, it, it, it becomes something altogether different when we live it out practically. So, um, but yeah, um, you know, when we met, um, I, I realized, did you, did you want to, um, did you want to finish something? You didn't talk about your first I, I, I'm getting ready to. Okay. Yep. Yep. I'm getting ready to do all that. I just want to make sure you was good. good. Okay. Okay. Cool. So yeah, um, we, um, so when we came together, Sheree and I, you know, we were trying to figure it out. I had already been married before. I got married when I was 20. Um, again, uh, this mama's boy marrying a woman, in my perspective, is you're going to you're there to fulfill my needs. You're there to uh, support me because that's all I know. I, all I know is that, you know, women are, are there to support the guy and, and, and you're you're pretty much there for me. Um, and, and I know that that's thwarted. I know that that is loaded. I know that there are a lot of ladies. Is, did he just say that? Absolutely. I, see that. I absolutely said that. Yeah. No, I no. That was my perspective. And quite frankly, that's why I got my tail handed to me on a regular basis. And quite honestly, after 12 years, it ended in divorce. Because there's no way that you're going to make a relationship work when it's all about you. That's and right. if you come into a relationship with that thwarted mindset that says that this person, and even when you are a female and you're looking at the male to be the, the you are supposed to be my provider. No, 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 no. You are supposed to supply all my needs. No, no, that's, that's twisted. And our culture in many ways teaches, you know, people to kind of think that way. And so that was me, man. And, and, and I didn't know what I was doing. I, I did not know what I was doing. We had a child um, shortly, uh, probably about five years into our marriage. And so today my, our, our son is 24 years old. He'll be 25 in October. And, uh, and then our daughter now, uh, the one that uh, I met when she was 
was 11. Uh, she'll be, uh, she just turned 33. And so um, I, I, it's an amazing, it's been an amazing journey. Um, you know, I like to tell people that we've been there, we've done that. Uh, we've understood what it looked like to grow up in very different households, come together and blend a family. And so together, Sheree and I have written seven books between the two of us, and they all span the, 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 uh, the, the subject matter of anything, marriages and or parenting. Uh, and when and we and we even have books that speaks to your emotional state. Sheree wrote a book about navigating through depression and all that kind of stuff. So, so I, I think that for us, man, at the end of the day, this is all serves to 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 why we do what we do. Right. And so, you know, even in our community marriages and parenting successfully, that's the name of our online relationship academy. Uh, we are there to support people and helping them to build their skill sets when it comes to being able to navigate through marriage and nar navigate through parenting and be able to do that successfully. And uh, we, we tell people all the time, we, we're not perfect, but bro, we are winning. I, I promise you that. You know, you, you don't have to have a perfect season to win the championship. That that, that I can promise you. Right. <laughs> I, I love that. You don't have to be perfect. I love that. That's good. Yeah, thing. I mean, you 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 can get there with a couple of L's, but you just need to learn from them instead of let them let them let them own let let them own you. You right. know what I mean? Right. Learning lessons, no no losses. Just lessons. absolutely Learning lessons. Absolutely. So, how long have you guys been together? We have been together, uh, we've been together 21 years. We will have been married. Um, It'll be 20, 20 years, years in, in January. January. Yep. So we are 19 years in a row as we sit here on this call with you, my friend, in a row. That's awesome, <laughs> That's awesome man. Yep, it's, yeah. it's weird because, like, y'all don't even look older than, like, 25. Well, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, sir. And like man, like that. Hey, I'm over here. I'm over here trying to do the math, right? I right, got right. Four. It's like wait a minute. It's like wait a minute. How old did these kids were? And it's like wait a minute. Maybe that something ain't adding up now. You look so younger we, than a kid, man. Right. We, <laughs> we got we got started early, and, and you have to understand this one right here. She has a. Uh, not too early. I, I think I she like has the Benjamin that. Button disease. This one right here. I don't here. like to say it started early because then people would be like, okay, so was she 13 when she had her? No, no. Nah, nah. I'm, I'm one of these women. I'm gonna tell you right. I'm not ashamed to say my age. I am 53 years old, and I'm proud to be 53. That's awesome. So yeah, God yeah, I'll be 52 good. in September, God has been good. and so God has been extremely amazing to us, and um, and we, we just we just doing it the best way we know how, man. That's it, and y'all are definitely doing it, and women. <laughs> I know that's right. How about that? We ain't trying to lose. <laughs> that's it. So, what are what are three important things uh, you guys feel it takes uh, to have a successful relationship? You want to start? Maybe one. I think. Um, yeah, I'll start. I think number one is learning to embrace your differences. Mm. Um, one thing we talked about earlier, just talking about our backgrounds. You know, we both came from two very different backgrounds. I grew up in a two parent home, um, which was pretty financially stable. Glenn grew up in a single parent home where they were on public assistance. Mm -hmm. um, that in itself was a challenge when we got married because our mindsets, even regarding finances, everything was different. Yep. But we had to learn to embrace and accept, okay, so he thinks differently about this. I think differently about this and find a middle ground. Yeah, yep. how we're going to come together. Right, yep. right. And make you our know. thing. Yeah. Right, because I couldn't expect from him, right. be like, well, this is you supposed to do. I, I need right. the $50 million house yeah. and this, yeah. that, and the other. And he's coming from a place of, well, we can just eat hot dogs and beans. And yeah. Because, <laughs> <Hey, laughs> that's, that's bro. That's, all, that's what hey. I know. I, don't have to have I, no I, I can whip up. Like true, true story, Chip. One time, you know, we were earlier on, and I think we may have been dating at the time. I don't know if we had actually gotten married, but she was complaining, "Ain't no food, ain't no food." You know, or maybe I, we, the, get, we were married. We, we were in a house. Yeah, that's what it was. We, we had just bought a house. We had just moved in our home, and uh, and I said, "You, you said what?" I said, "Well, <laughs> there, plenty of food in the house." Before what? you say that, let me. Okay, so to give you an example of my, and you're talking about embracing differences. Embracing difference. Okay, so I grew up. I would come home from school after school. You know, you come home from school, you fix a snack. I'm throwing a T-bone steak in the oven. Nah, uh, for a snack. snack. Yeah, that's different. So, so, yeah. so that's where I came from. Yeah, so she okay. don't understand the mindset. We didn't have steakums. Bruh, I'm throwing an actual T-bone steak. She, she don't the understand oven. the idea that when she comes and says, oh, man, I can't, we don't have no gravy. I said, we don't? I said, no. Nah, yes, we do. I said, no, nah, I looked all and, over the cabinet. We ain't got no cabinet. Gra we, got, we got any flour? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we we got any soy sauce, any Worcestershire sauce, something? Yeah. 
You got got a little butt or something? So, yes. Okay, it, cool. Yeah. I, I, bruh, <laughs> bruh, know what I said. Well, do me a favor. Get me that. Come on, let me, I'm going to show you something. Yeah. And your boy burned up some flour and made some gravy, man. Yeah, yeah. And, and we had gravy on that rice because this one right here was famous. I don't know where she grew up, but she was famous for rice with no gravy. I'm like, bro, how do you do that? Like, <laughs> where do they do that at? Who does rice without gravy? Where do they do that at? You know, but I grew up in Baltimore. So, you know, they in D.C., <laughs> On DC are 45 minutes put away from each other. They put butter and sugar on their rice. We put grapes. So I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. So when she talks about embrace and differences, we had to learn that there was no such thing as a right way or a wrong way. It was just the way you did it. It was a different way. And the minute, and I think that just to weigh in on that, babe, it was because of my inability to embrace differences in my first marriage of 12 years that ultimately led to its demise. Right. It, it wasn't the acts of uh, adultery. It wasn't the acts of all those. Things. Those were the symptoms that out that were the outcroppings of a bigger problem. And the bigger problem was partly I couldn't accept this woman for who she was. Right. Because personality wise, his ex-wife and I are very much alike. Very, very, similar. very much alike. We have the same temperament. I mean, she and I are great friends today. That's my sister. You know, we we yeah. developed a relationship where we're like sisters now. But we're very much alike temperamentally. Yeah. We think the same. We're both extremely organized, very, very deep attention to detail. Um, and he wasn't able to embrace that. Yeah, I, in I their railed against that in our in but our he relationship. To accept well, and well, let, me, let, let me ask you about this, because there's a couple <laughs> there's a couple common things that I see. Sure. Uh mm-hmm. and and y'all can tell me if you agree with this. You know, going back, you know, how uh Sheree, you said you know, I, I, I did some work on myself once mm-hmm. I went through those things to mm-hmm. make sure I was good. And then right. things started to turn around. Mm-hmm. And then you talked about, you know, um, you know, I was not able to embrace the differences. Mm-hmm. So, so in that, you know, a lot of times, and I'm really big on this, like, like a lot of times people look at, you know, the, the whole outside. But I, I, told, I truly agree that you got to look at yourself and be the best version of you. Yeah, well, yes. you can be good for anybody. A- absolutely, one and of the things, anything you do, right? Hundred percent, Chip. Hundred percent. Right, right. And I think that I mean, for me, I knew I was jacked up. Mm. I was able to take ownership of my part in even my previously failed relationships. Yeah, yeah. I didn't blame it all on them. Now they they had their issues too, but I took my responsibility for my areas, right. and I and I was able to. After the second marriage ended, um, and it ended very badly, I, I was yeah. homeless. Um, my daughter and I were basically put out on the street. Um, so I had lost everything. So I was at the bottom. Mm. And But God had to get me to that place for me to be still, to be able to hear him. Yeah. So and for him quiet. to be able to, right. Yeah, yeah. For him, <clears throat> for him to be able to speak into me. And it was in that season that God just started showing me me. Yeah. And showing me, well, you you need to work on some areas. You're not, you know, on the outside, everybody's looking at me as I'm okay, but God was able to show me some areas of me. You know, I, I had a problem with my mouth. Yeah. I could castrate a man with my tongue like it wasn't nothing. Yeah. I could cut a man down and because mm-hmm. I didn't have any respect for men, and I had to realize that that came from my Your upbringing. Because, right, because yeah. of my dad being an alcoholic, because yeah. of him not really being there, I had lost respect for men. I didn't know how to respect a man, Absolutely. and so that came out in my relationships. And so I had to work on learning how to respect authority, how to respect men. And so God started working on me in that area. And I remember when we first, even when we were friends, it was a running joke. I was like, I can not say the word submission. Right. And that <laughs> word wasn't coming out my mouth. Right. She's I'm su- she's, sub what? She's, she's sub, sub who? DC, bro. Su- 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 I, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> they don't do that in Southeast. Right. <laughs> That's it. But I had to learn oh. what true submission was and right. that it do- didn't mean that I was weak. Right. Or less. But than that it meant that I was giving into somebody being an authority over right. me, that I was allowing an authority over me. And that first started with the authority of God in my life. Right. And the and that pendulum swings both mm-hmm. ways. Obviously, you know, we're still talking about embracing differences. And I think that for us, and you talk about, you know, what does it take in order to have a successful relationship? Uh, when you are a person that is self-centered, 
oh. as opposed to being uh, other people focused mm-hmm. um, for a minute and for a season enough to bring about self-awareness. See, by definition, self-awareness is being able to determine emotionally where you are against the rest of the world. Being able for you, listen, I'm trying to hear that real clear. When I am aware of who I am emotionally and where I, where my place is, and I'm also at the same time clear on where everyone else is, I also am able to determine, you know, literally how much energy to bring to a room, how much um, 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 uh, ideas and, and, and of me do I need to assert. And so being self-aware is about calling me out. Being self-aware is about speaking truth. And I think that unfortunately people can't speak truth to their relationships because they can't speak truth to themselves. Hey, hey, uh, I'm gonna hit you with this one. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, lights. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You, you, you get, right, 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 right. Hey, man. <laughs> That's good you stuff. Ch- you was, you was uh, uh, d- disconnecting a little bit there, Chip. Oh, okay. But- I was saying, uh, like in church, amen, yeah. lights. Right, 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 <laughs> right, 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 right. Don't even <laughs> start it. Look, I ain't messing with you, Chip. I ain't, look, look, he about to take me down a road. We, I'm going to take this mic over, bump me out of the way, and we're going to preach in a minute. Don't you start. Hey, hey I got the organ. Duh, right, look, 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 look. Don't, don't play that note. Don't play that note. Don't play that. Don't don't play that note. You know that's the note I like. Don't play that note. Look, look, bro. Look, we ain't about to go there. You know what I mean? We, we got a time limit here, but I think we want to really underscore that the whole point of this, guys, is is that you become self aware that your stuff don't stink, that you got issues, everyone else sees them, and to the degree that you're able to call them out in you first, what happens is you get to deal with it so that now it doesn't trip up everyone else. So I think that embracing differences is critical. If we could go to the number two, I'm not sure how we're looking on time, Chip, but I wanted to just interject if you could. One of the, the second thing I think that is critical, critical for successful relationships is for people to understand that communication is a skill set. And if you can understand and embrace the fact that communication is a skill set, you couple that with self-awareness and ask yourself the question, am I an effective communicator? Here's how you know the answer to that question. When you communicate, people receive what it is that you say and change happens. Right. Right. As a coach, if you fail to communicate to your players, they do not run the play properly. Right. And, and, and there's a difference between them hearing what you said and was able to receive what you said. You can say the same thing the same way all the time, different but they don't tone. receive it. But yeah. then another coach comes along and they say the exact same thing, but they do it a different way. And they've been able to successfully communicate something. You know that the player received it because when they do, when they receive that, boom, they run the play correctly. Now, they may not be able to get the outcome that they need. That's not their worry. The question is, did you execute it properly? Right. And if you execute it properly enough, eventually you'll move to change. And I think in relationships, the problem is, is that most people – think because I said it and I can talk and I, I came out the womb a talker. You, my, my, I come from a whole long line of talkers, but I also come from, from a line of horrible communicators Right. because right. talking is only one part of that. Um, and so there's transmission, there's reception. Those are two of the basic components of communication. And when you understand that that's a skill set and you have to hone that skill set, you have to become very good at, at, at using it. I, I tell people in our workshops all the time, you know, there's a difference between a carpenter who understands what a hammer is and then a carpenter who knows how to use that jump because his skill set is honed. You got some guys that can take a hammer right at the end and then one fail swoop, boom, right. drop the nail completely in mm-hmm. and without hardly any effort because they are skilled in using that that hammer. Then you got other people going to grab that thing up at the net and they're going to be trying to come up and they're going to be- beat up something and tear their hands up because they're not skilled in right. using something uh, that's a tool. So communication is a tool. Right. It's a skill set. And if you hone it and you become good at it, I think it changes the entire game in your relationship. Right. And I think the communication is pro- really the number one thing, because no matter what issue, whether it's finances, is any other issue in your relationship, if you can't communicate about it, it's a wrap. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't it's a wrap. matter. 
And so it's you a wrap. have to be able to communicate. So I can't be speaking in Spanish and expect you to understand me. So I have to learn how to speak your language. I have to learn to be able to speak in a tone that you can understand, that you'll receive. And so it's so many levels to communication. And I think people think that, well, I said it. Yeah. I said it. You should have heard it. I said that already. Right. Like, okay. And that's why, you know, we'll always be like, okay, you heard me, but you weren't listening. Right. And there's and a that's huge difference. True. People will hear you, but are they listening yeah. to what you're saying? And we found, Chip, that when I'm listening, I can I, I, I get what you said enough to be able to do what you said. One of the drills that Sheree and I take our couples through and we coach people mm-hmm. up in this area is one of the services that we actually provide. And that is we teach people little little techniques like things like when you know that you are horrible at communicating. One of the things you can practice is asking people, what did they hear you say? Mm. Not what you said. Those are two different things. I didn't ask you, what did I say? Because that's, that's what often what we'll do. We'll say, well, what did I say? Well, what did I say? D- d- obviously, what you said wasn't received. <laughs> so the question becomes, what did they hear you say? Right. And there's a difference. And when you ask someone that and you say, no, that's not rhetorical. I literally need you to answer me. What did you hear me say? To this day, Sharice will say, you know, hey, you know, can you go to the store and do get this, 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 and this? And I'll say, cool, boom, I'll go, and I come back, I don't have all those things. And she <laughs> said, what did you hear me say? And I said, I, I heard you say get some, 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 some gravy. <laughs> some flour. <laughs> she said, no, I, I, I said, bring me some flour, bring me some, you know, I mean, there was a whole right. list to, to get there. And bro, you only, so I think that unfortunately, most people don't recognize that. And I think that's what trips uh, most people up. Okay. And then is that a third one? If, if, if there's a third one, I, I probably would have to say that, um, so we talked about embracing the difference. That's huge. We talked about communication. That's huge. Would you, you say fun? Have fun. Yeah. Build, continue to build on your friendship. Yeah. Be friends. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that is essential. I mean, cause it's, it's, it's easy when things get hard, it's easy to walk away from a person you don't like. Because mm-hmm. you can love a person and not like them. Absolutely. Please say that again, Bay. You can love a person but not like them. But if you're friends, mm. when things get tough, when things are tight, when y'all going through so it's harder for me to walk away from my friend. Absolutely. That's why it's than funny. it is for me to just walk away from my husband. It's funny because you'll watch girlfriends or, or, or fellas too, but I see girlfriends, they'll fall out. They'll, they'll, they'll get into an right. argument. They'll fall out with but one another. But y'all gonna come back together. But at the end of the day, you that's your that's your girlfriend. Right, you, 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 gonna, come you, back you together. gonna come back together. However, conversely, you'll see a husband and wife fall out and they ain't speaking to each other for 25 days. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody had sex in a month and a half. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it just gets bad because at this particular point, you have ceased to become friends. And I think that that probably is one of the critical underpinnings of our, like, this is my, this is, this, this is my dog. Like, like Sheree yeah. is my road dog, like for real. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. and she, she's very woman. She's yeah. very womanly. But at the same time, like I trust this woman mm-hmm. implicitly. Like, yeah. you know, I, I, that's my friend. Right. And and so at the end of the day, when we beefing or when something ain't right, we'd like to tell people we've had how many arguments have we had in nineteen five years? Five arguments in nineteen years. Five. And, 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 and we and, disagree every day. And we <laughs> want y'all to catch that. We have our challenges. <laughs> hey, we, don't we have our disagree. challenges, but we've only had five. Well, we've only allowed arguments. that to escalate into five arguments mm-hmm. over the course of 19 years. And part of that is because I recognize she don't mean me no harm. That's my right, friend. Right. She's not saying these things to hurt, hurt me. Right. She's saying these things because she's trying to get a point across. My question is. Absolutely. Right. What is she? What yeah. are what's what's what is she not saying, bro? Like, can you yeah. read between the lines? There's a reason why she's on this. So, mm-hmm. so I think that that's critical. Yeah, and embrace your difference, communication, and uh, friends. Be, be, be become friends, friends. and have fun. Why, yeah. why are you doing it? Because yeah. I promise you, bro, we we having we having a good time. We we, <laughs> we, we has a good time. Life, life, life is hard enough. You know. Right. Really? Be around, you know, not All have day. fun with your with your spouse, a person that you love. Right. All you day. But this is the person you're gonna come home to every day. I ain't trying every to come day. home to somebody I don't right. like. Right, right, right. And if you and if you're a believer, here's what I'm gonna submit to you. you. May mess you up. I don't know if you read read far enough, but there's there's no <laughs> marriage in heaven. 
Uh, and so the truth of the matter is, the is that you better make the most of it now. We might as well put this work in because uh, yeah. after this, it's over. It's a wrap. It's yep. a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap. We're going to see each other. We'll be friends in heaven. But I promise you this, all that yeah. love ain't none of that. So let's <laughs> just make that junk work right now. That's it. Well, last question. Uh, any specific or particular advice? You know, either you maybe we can do one a piece advice for couples. You know, <clears throat> you want to go first? I'm going to say this. Um, uh, I want you to do me a favor, and I want you to 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 resolve that you don't know everything. Mm. I want you to resolve and come to a conclusion as an individual that you don't have this. Because here's what I promise you. If you're going to build anything of significance, you are going to need help. Things that are easy to build, people can do them by themselves. Relationships, marriages, uh, this thing, parenting, like that requires a tremendous amount of insight, a tremendous amount of oversight, and a tremendous amount of wisdom to be able to do that properly so that people listen to me closely so that your children don't have to recover from their childhood after they grow up become adults and they don't have to now recover from their childhood because you didn't jack them up I'm, I'm i'm not judging i've done it I, i've been there i understand it it's been done to me and in order for me to break that curse in order for me to break that cycle i literally have to get outside of myself and ask for help and listen to me for all of my faith people James encourages us that faith without works is dead. It's okay to believe God. I get that. I'm with you. I'm 100 right with you. But I promise you, there is a work that needs to be done, and it's called getting help. I think, uh, Chip, every coach needs a coach. Yes. And at the end of the day, uh, parents are coaches. Husbands, you're coaches. Wives, you are coaches. That's what you do. And if you are not being coached, then you're not going to be able to navigate that successfully. So I would say that the, the one thing that I would encourage people is stop being prideful. Don't let your pride cause you to miss out on a, on a lifetime of love and, and commitment and, and excitement because you just decide to selfishly say, you know what, I don't need nobody in our business. That's your problem. <laughs> because we all grew up in that community. What goes on in this house stays in this house. In this house. That's and it. I think that that is destroying the fabric of our community because <clears throat> we won't open our mouths in time enough right. to be able to get the help that we need. A lot of people are opening their mouth, but you got stage four cancer at this point. Right. We can help you, but I don't know if you're going to survive. I, the survival rate at stage four is mm. significantly uh, uh, harder than yeah. the survival rate at stage one. And some of y'all are at stage zero and you're on your way to one and you won't open your mouth. Right. And it's because right. you think you got this. And I'm going to promise you, you don't. Right, right, right. Did that help you, from my friend? Did hey, hey, <laughs> hey, you know, I, I was trying to do my best to hold on and I hit you with the sound of faith like, ooh. <laughs> you can do that in the post editing, bro. Drop, drop the crowd for the fanfare right there. <laughs> hey, short sentences, man. Right, 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 right. Mic drop. Ooh, All that <laughs> That's good stuff right there. Right. And I just want to add that I think that it's essential to continue to invest in yourself as individuals. Mm -hmm. um, that I have to be a whole person before I can be of value to anybody else. That's good. And so I think oftentimes what happens, especially for women, and I'm going to speak to the mothers and to the wives, we get so caught up in our role as wives and mothers that we forget about us. Mm -hmm. And that if I don't take care of me, if I don't take care to make sure that I'm mentally, physically, emotionally healthy, yeah. I'm not going to have the wherewithal to be able to be there for my family. And so I think self-care is very important. That's for men and women. You have to take care of you. You have to invest in yourself so that you can be the best you can be for your family. Mm. You can't, um, you have to learn how to create boundaries. You have to create a safe space for yourself where you are continuing to grow. And one thing that most people don't think about growth is attractive. And so I Ooh, know that, please as say that Glenn, again. They, they don't understand that. Please say that again. <laughs> personal growth, personal development is attractive. And so as Glenn has grown over the years in different areas, that's become more and more attractive to me. And I know this, he said the same of me as I've grown and become more, I've blossomed into who I am as I've become my own person. 
that's attractive to him because now I'm not this, I wasn't never mealy mouth, but I was this clingy person that I didn't have my own identity. I was just mom and wife. Right. But now that I've grown into my own, I have my own voice. I have my own, you know, I've grown into being who I'm supposed to be. Absolutely. And I believe that each and every one of us has a calling. And when you flow in what it is that you're called to do, I believe that mom, wife can be part of that. But I believe that there's something bigger in each of us. And as you grow in yourself personally, that that helps you to be more of a benefit to your family, more of a yep. benefit to your children. Yep. But it also it helps to build you up and give you that self-confidence to be able to flow better. And it also gives you that extra to be able to give to people. You know, if I don't have anything, if I'm so depleted because mm -hmm. I'm always giving out, giving out, giving out, giving out. Empty cup. Right. Right. I can't. When when crisis hits, I'm done because I don't have nothing. No, I, I, I have to add this last little piece, Chip, uh, is that only in math do two halves make a whole. Right. Right. Only in math. Right. To, in, in relationships, two halves make two halves. Right. They Definitely. don't they don't make a whole. It, it takes a whole plus another whole to make a hole. Right. Think about on the wedding cake. They have a whole little man, a whole mm. woman. It's not a half a body and a half a body that they put up there together and smushed together to make a hole. Talking about, hey, we won. It's a whole female. It's a whole male. And so you talking about, you, I'm bringing 50 cent and you right. got 50 cent. We only going to have 50 cent. That's it. <laughs> but in math, you thinking, okay, yeah, that does make a dollar in math. But here's what I know. It makes 50 cent in relationships. So if right. you are a person that's bringing 50 cent to the table and the other person is bringing a dollar to the table, that person with 50 cent is only working with 50 cent. Right. So for you to demand of them a dollar is to demand of them what they do not have. And the problem is, is that they never went and got and grown and made that 50 cent worth more they didn't and grew it because themselves. they did not invest that 50 cent. They went and they hit it. Don't get me started, bro. And I promise you, <laughs> if you can change the game there, you can win. <laughs> I'm on the organ. I'm on the organ. <laughs> All my Pentecostal folks, they just say, hey. <laughs> I'm on the organ. I'm on the organ. <laughs> I know well, that's right. Well, thank you guys so much for again for sharing, you know, your relationship and your experience. Uh such amazing stuff. You know, you know, we joked about the, you know, the, the different points and that they're really good in the sound effects, but it's it's such amazing stuff and it's it's really cool when we can go through the things that we've gone through in our life and now we can you know, transfer those things and use those yep. to help other people that's right. able to help them move efficiently throughout their life. And that Absolutely. brings about fulfillment. Absolutely. Know? Absolutely. That's what we try to do every day uh, as, as coaches. Uh, you yeah. know, I'm a speaker. Uh, I travel an awful lot. We do workshops. We have several signature workshops that we do for local churches and, and, and places, community organizations that would have us and bring us in uh, to add value. That's what we write about. That's what we talk about. That's how we coach, even in our online coaching academy, personal coaching. It all is about adding value uh, and taking what we've learned, taking what we've gone through. I tell people all the time, Chip, I don't know everything. But what I do know, I'm obligated to share. Right. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I believe that hashtag, we all need yes. some help. I believe that, brother. I believe that. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go hashtag amen, brother. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. No. All right. Well, Glenn's you. talked about, Glenn has talked about, you know, what we do, um, marriages and parenting successfully, relationships. If people want to learn more, they can go to yes. www.crcoach.com to learn more information yeah. about the different um, programs that we have. You can schedule a free assessment where we can talk to you, find out what your situation is, see if we are a fit for you, whether for you to come in the academy or for one-on-one -on -one coaching, or we will refer you out to others. Um, we yeah. realize we're not the coach for everybody. Yeah. Um, we also realize that there are some people that do need counseling. And yeah. There's a difference between counseling and coaching. And we have a network of counselors that we can send you out to if that is the case. But whatever you do, you know, reach out to somebody. Don't try to do this alone. Yeah. Um, oftentimes, you know, 
we try to do this thing called marriage and families by ourselves and we wind up, you know, struggling and you don't have to. Yeah. There's people out here that have done it, been there, done it, and they can help you along the way to help you get over those hurdles. And quite and frankly, every relationship, yeah. you're going to face some challenges yeah. and you don't have to do it by yourself. Yeah, quite frankly, there are people who are literally built to help you go through that and, and you do not have to go through by yourself. They, 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 they got you, but you need to open your mouth. Man, such a powerful session. Thank you guys again. Thank you for having us. Thanks for us. having us, man. And really uh, appreciate it. Yes, yes. And thank you guys for watching this episode of the Success Chronicles. We'll see you next time. God bless. Thank you. Bye. Go get it.